The mission today is to sharpen your swords and get you ready for battle. It's time to fine tune your craft and make you the best in what you do. The mission is to equip you to help anyone purchase what they need. We'll share the best advice from the best in their industry. You'll be listening to a conversation you wish you had with the mentors you wish you had. Take what makes sense to you and makes you better in your career. You guys, Bruce Lee said it best. Absorb what is useful and discard what is not. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Commission Mission. My name is Eric Gerace. I'm Micah Henderson, and I'm really happy to have a great friend of ours on today. This is B. Cody Shields, co-founder of Think Real Estate. How you doing today, Cody? Dude, I'm being, uh, I'm doing good. Sorry. I, I get nervous around you, Micah. Yeah. No, I, I'm doing awesome. I'm glad to be on the podcast, man. This is awesome. Go I'm, Knowles, huh? Right. Yeah, roll <laughs> tide, baby. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited to have you on. Um, I, I think when it comes to us, it's more like, what do we not have to talk about? Yes. Um, and But to, to kind of help us keep track a little bit better, let's just kind of start from the beginning. Let's go. Um, you know, what did you do before? Real estate, what made you want to start moving into real estate? Okay, so that's kind of a two-part question. I'll start what I did before real estate. I was actually a professional baseball player. Um, I played college baseball for uh, four years, uh, majored in nightlife and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and I ended up chasing the baseball dream, played with the Cubs for a few years. Um, and then after that, I went to FSU PC. That's where we all met. And then I, I got into actually studying and trying to, to, to do well. I got my business degree there. Um, but actually what got me into real estate and why I wanted to do real estate was when I was 14 years old, around that time, I played the game of Monopoly for the first time. <laughs> and I fell in love with the idea of the art of the deal and all that. And that's what first planted that seed was that game of Monopoly. So I actually have a, an old Monopoly board. I actually got a couple Monopoly boards hanging up in my office. They're like framed? Yeah. That's yeah. All, what, I, what was your favorite piece? Uh, I, I was always the, I call it a schnauzer. It's technically a Yorkshire Terrier. Oh. But I, I, I always play as... Yeah. My, 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 my schnauzer that passed yeah. away a few years ago. Oh, man. He, but, he has a name, I'm sure. Yeah, Rocker. Rocker. Yeah. Um, I was a race car. I was a cowboy. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, does that say something? I, I think maybe a <laughs> psychologist can probably break that down. Yeah, all three of those, yeah. for sure. Um, so I, I remember, really, it seemed like right out the gate, uh, seeing big things from you, putting up big numbers. Perception is reality, Micah, and we'll get into that when when we're talking about marketing. Um, No, I I did okay at at the beginning um, when when I first got into real estate. I was putting up decent numbers, but uh, nothing compared to what some of the industry leaders were. Um, But but yeah, perception is reality for sure when it comes to that. But not trying to shortchange myself, I was able to to have a successful career early on. Yeah. So. Um, so, but early on, as many people do, you were working for someone else. I was. You were working was. for another broker, another company that was already well established. At what point uh, did you get to where you said, I, I don't need to, to be led. I don't need anybody else to tell me how to do this. Um, what, what, what set that off in your brain? Well, I, and, and I think that's the second part of the question, right? Is the reason why I wasn't as successful as I knew that I could be was because I, I wanted to be a leader. Um, I did like to be led and I worked for an amazing company. I mean, they, they were uh, uh, amazing. Um, but then I met my business partner now, Zach Sanchez. And uh, just after meeting him and I realized like I saw some of the big goals that he had and it, it really resonated with me. And I was like, man, like that's what I'm missing in my life is I, when I got into the business world, I didn't, I didn't know how to chase my goals like I did in the in the sports world Mm -hmm. then once when I met him I was like wow I think I do want my own company one day and so honestly the goals in my own company drive me way more than like my individual you know commission goals for myself as an agent so now I'm able to really chase those goals Mm -hmm. because I've found my why yeah you know and you're you're not building someone else's dream you know, correct. There's, there's correct. Absolutely. Um, and, and now that I'm building my own dream, man, it, it's my, I can, my, my drive is way more than it was when I was just an agent for mm-hmm. sure. And I, I, I know you, you have, you have some serious drive. So that, that's, that's saying something, um, you know, bringing up, uh, bringing up Zach. Okay. It seems like you guys have been friends forever and, um, but I actually, what, it, it, a decade? It, it, no, it's no, almost no. like a TV show, Zach and Cody. No, That's no, <laughs> I, well, so, so, so we met at the gym, and, and I really wish we had, like, I, I could, like, get up and show you the, the animated story. Mm-hmm. But basically, we met at the gym. He was doing this funky exercise where he had, like, a, a, a pulley and he, on his leg, and he was like, Ugh. 
<clears throat> like bringing his knee to his chest as he's in like a push-up position. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? And he jumps up and he goes, I'm working on my V. Spring break's <laughs> coming up. And so I was like, I like this guy. And he was in sales. So anyways, that was in like 2013. Yeah. Uh, and and so I was like, you know, I, I really, I, I, I liked the drive that I saw from him. And, um, but yeah, we, we hit it off. And, and so from 2014 to now, so was that seven years, something like that? Yeah. And I know that he was coming from uh, a similar background to me. You know, I know he worked in some of the same insurance products. Right. Um, deciding to be a partner with each other. You guys compliment each other. Um, uh, not as in, you know, Cody, you're so tall. You know, yeah, Zach, right, you're right, so right. handsome. Nice V. Do you guys compliment <laughs> each other as in um, skills, we, you know, we, skill sets? We do. And I, I think that's like, that's probably the coolest dynamic of, of Think Real Estate. Um, and, and honestly, we, we, we get a lot of good feedback on that is our, I, I 100% know that it was, was ordained from God because I mean, we, we compliment each other so well. Um, he is, he's the brainiac right? Like he is graduated high school at 16, college at 19, worked in banking and lending, uh, ran two state farm offices, not sure if we're supposed to name names, but anyways, uh, two insurance offices. Um, and, and so he's, he was the one, they didn't have a TV growing up like on purpose because he, was like studying and taking all these courses and everything. And so he's like the brains behind it. And he's, he's amazing at putting in systems mm -hmm. with that. He has, you know, most people are that type a, they don't have uh, the ability to be able to connect with people and build those relationships. And he's got both. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm kind of on the flip side to where I, I'm the relationship guy. I'm, I'm creative. I've got the creative juices for the marketing. Um, very good with creating those relationships outside, but I do have a little bit of the type A to where I can, I can stay organized enough mm -hmm. to, 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 to make it work. And actually it's pretty cool because we both gravitated and pulled from each other to where now we're, we're kind of mixing into, um, a, a pretty cool complement of each other. Yeah. One of the things that, that comes to mind watching think uh, real estate develop and grow was I saw you everywhere. Right. Um, marketing obviously was one of the your focuses early Absolutely. on. Um, talk about that. Like, was there a formula for it? What was your what type of marketing you decided to use and why? Those Get attention. Mm -hmm. Get attention. I mean, that, that, that's at the end of the day, we, we talk about it all the time. Uh, social know, media. You were on social media it, all the time. Even before Think Real Estate, it was Think. Uh, you know, be Cody Shields. Which, yep. I, if we get to it, I would love to tell you the the, the story about behind that. That was a big fluke. But anyways, um, our, our biggest thing was attention and, and anonymity is our biggest obstacle. That that's like one of our main things. Anonymity. If they don't know who I am, if they don't know who we are, they can't purchase from us. So I at least need them to not like me. Mm -hmm. They got to know who I am. They're first. aware of you. And I just need them to be aware of me. I need three things. I need them to know who I am first. Mm -hmm. I need them to know what I do. Second, and then third, I need them to choose me. Honestly, the choosing part to me is not the hardest part because if I can get them to know who I am, they, that kind of weeds it out. Mm -hmm. You know, you're either going to like me and, or, or not. And even if there's only a small amount that like me and, and they love me, then I can still get that business and be able to, to, to yeah. do that. If you're them. getting enough attention, if, For sure. if the total number, you know, is large it, enough, even if a small percentage of that is... Uh, choosing you, then you're still in business. Yeah, and, and they, they actually, I, I like to think of it like this, is like you've got 25% of the people hate you, 25% of the people love you, and there's that 50% in the middle. Well, the 25 that hate aren't, aren't doing anything with you. Mm -hmm. 25 that love you, you're probably not going to lose them. I need to get that 50% off the fence. Mm -hmm. That's what I need. And uh, and so, anyways, I to get all of that, I need them to know who I am. That's right. I can work on that middle ground. Just, you can have the best product or service in the world, but if you stay in a room with no windows, no phone, and just waiting for business exactly. to come knock on the door, right. you're not in business. Exactly. So, so kind of you know going back to you was obviously social media was our, our biggest driver. We didn't we didn't have the money for the billboards that we have now. Um, you know Google AdWords, paid advertising, stuff like that. Hire anybody to run our website. Like we didn't have that. I mean we started from from nothing. We're not a franchise. So we just said, all right, we're going we're gonna to outwork everybody. Because what, what we saw was in, in marketing, a lot of times people just try to throw dollars at it. Where in social media marketing, if I, I mean, you could bust your tail and produce content, 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 get out there. 
Um, you're able to, you know, and not just write hook content asking for the sale. I mean, jabs, like, you know, I'm, I'm referencing Gary V. I don't know if y'all, mm-hmm. Gary Vaynerchuk, and he oh. has that, that boxing reference of jab, 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 and, right and hook. Any, any other um, uh, sources of inspiration that you've got? You know, please let us know because there's a lot of people that uh, are watching this right now. This is the first time they're hearing some of this information. Gary Vaynerchuk, man, he 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 taught that to uh, you know, I say not personally, but but you know, I, his his book was jab 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 right hook, and it's all about providing that value. So it's not just in social media in general. You know, I want to be able to provide value, provide value, provide value. Boom. And you answer the human psychology obstacles of, of touches and getting in front of people. For sure. Absolutely. And, and creating yourself as an expert in your field by, by doing that. And so right. it's just a phenomenal strategy, and obviously it's worked. It, it, it's worked. <laughs> um, and and we've, been, we've been very blessed. And what's really cool to me is, is now we're on the backside of, I say the backside, the next side of we built this thing. Now we're teaching all the agents yeah. to do it as well. Because well, I don't consider myself a real estate. Like we don't own a real estate company. Mm-hmm. We, we're a media company. Yep. Uh, Comma, we sell real estate. Right. So that, that's literally every agent that comes in, we sit them down in the marketing meeting. We say, hey, you are a media company now. Yeah. We're going to teach you some real estate too. Well, and, and let's get into that a little bit more that uh, I think it is impressive that in a short amount of time, uh, you know, you guys have decided to go off on your own and now you got a couple offices, you got uh, yep. d- uh, two offices, how many agents? Uh, we're at like 63 agents. At 63 think. agents. Yep. So it, in, in what amount of time were you able to accomplish this? We started in August of 2018, so two months before Hurricane Michael. Yeah. And yep. I mean, do you think the hurricane, uh, uh, you know, helped you? I know you were flipping houses. Yeah, so it, it, it helped um, and hurt in a way, um, but I would say helped more than anything. Mm-hmm. What you know, it did I, was it made you change gears. It, it did. It, ch- it changed gears, but what happened was, is so we had a two-month head start, and then all of a sudden it happened. Wasn't sure what was going to happen. Talked to a friend of mine in New Orleans, and he said, hey, hang on, because when Katrina happened, that's when everything took off over there real estate wise. And basically what it did is it made everybody that had a real estate decision in the next five to seven years, make it now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Am I going to move in five years? Well, now I'm going to do it. Like now was the time. So everybody, you, it was this shuffle of, of making those decisions. So because of that, um, we were able to kind of push our way into the market, probably a little bit more yeah. and quicker, eat up a little market share than we would have been able to. So, you know, that, that helped in, in some respects, uh, your ability to get attention mm-hmm. helped in a lot of respects. What else has helped you, um, you know, grow as much as you have in the amount of time that you have? Culture, 100% culture. That's the easiest question you'll ask me today. Um, we, you know, we decided when we, started think real estate that we wanted it to be different obviously and of course that sounds very cliche right like no one opens the company to try to mimic be, anybody yeah. else but um but we we did feel like that you know here in bay county there there was a an opportunity for a just a different feel mm-hmm. it's not that there's anything wrong with any other offices or companies or how they do it but we just saw an opening for this different feel to have this different culture and our goal was to to be um you know c- combine crazy fresh marketing with classic classic customer service that mm-hmm. was kind of our thing right yeah. so you know a lot of people look at us as a as a you know a lot of our agents are newer you mm-hmm. know zach and i i've been in it eight years zach been in it five years like we're still newer mm-hmm. um but we 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 do things this you know fresh and social media but at the end of the day we just train on make sure you stink and answer your phone make sure you right. treat people the right way that's old school you know and then and try to make sure that we instill that yeah but then also the, the other part of our, our culture is, is the training. Mm-hmm. Like we just said, you know, and Eric, I know you've seen this. The barrier of entry in real estate mm-hmm. is so low. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really not that difficult no. to get your license. So there's a lot of um, just people that, quite frankly, aren't, I don't say don't belong in the business. They're not trained well enough to be able to handle mm-hmm. these these transactions. So um, we said, hey, we want to make it super fun. We want to make it laid back. There's going to be dancing and fun and this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, your contracts are going to be perfect. Right. You know, you're 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 going to answer your phone. You're going to do all this. So we, we created this culture of excellence. We call it being elite to where whether you're going to do one deal a year or you're going to try to do 200 deals your goal is to be elite on every single deal that you do. We don't just allow people to come in and just kind of willy nilly do real estate. That's not, that's not what we do. So that, 
that right there, people love. They buy into that, mm -hmm. you know? As and, well they should. Yeah. And, and I, I would disagree with you when uh, you say that there, uh, no one goes into business um, trying to be like someone else. I, I see plenty of, of, of entrepreneurs taking a winning um, recipe and trying to recreate it because they're seeing that it's already working. Yeah. Um, and then uh, apply that to what you're doing. Right. I, I would not be surprised if I see a lot of different offshoots taking your winning formula and recreating it, you know, whether it's, uh, um, you know, anybody uh, watching this, any of your agents, it, it, it's a winning formula. And it wouldn't surprise me if anybody tried to recreate it. Well, <laughs> I will say um, they, they say that, uh, what is it? The biggest flattery is, Comp yeah. you know, yeah. people who copy or whatever. Copying is the biggest form of flattery. We, we have seen different things, you know, of, of people, um, that look similar to what we're doing, uh, from time to time. So that's always kind of fun. I actually had one, one time where a guy literally from another company, it, it had my exact graphic. Evidently he had his, his person <laughs> redo the exact graphic and just put his picture Often on it. Often imitated. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. never but you know, like I, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. So well, anyways. one of the things aside from, uh, uh, what you're doing is you're, you're giving, um, in, uh, inspiration to people. So you create these marketing strategies and you do your present on social media and people see the success and they want to mimic that. And, right. um, uh, I know that I've, I've heard conversations with other realtors in here uh, about and hearing you, Oh, well think does it this way. Well, if I saw think do it. This oh, way. wow. So, that's cool. Uh, when you think about it, yeah. um, you're, you're, you're inspiring change in an industry. I, I, I had probably one of the biggest compliments, another realtor from another company one time, they said, uh, you and Zach are disruptors. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was like, I was like, I like that. Yeah. And, and she says it about every year. She'll send me a text like, hey, this is awesome. Y'all are disruptors. I love that. Yeah. And uh, normally one would think that's a negative thing, but that's actually a positive thing. One, you're getting that attention that you want. But also if you're disrupting something that um, is, is uh, stagnant and old, well, good. You know, uh, um, uh, a new perspective. It, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to start coming on this show once a week. I don't mm -hmm. like no therapist. Just yeah. come on here. You guys just build me up. <laughs> like this is amazing. Let's get the week going. Monday morning. Yeah. Let's do it on Mondays. I'll show up about eight o'clock. And then, Jason won't be here. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's like, maybe we hey, can I, just meet for coffee. The feel good tell, hour. We'll just change just the name. All these can we bar things. the head the, the headphones <laughs> for you know? I love it. The, I love the it. Coffee this shop. is man. I'm like on cloud yeah. nine. No, it's. Um, you should tune in to our other episodes. I, I will now. Um, so w w let's talk about, you know, other inspirations. Um, uh, you know, let's talk about tricks of the trade yep. that might help somebody, whether it is making phone calls, setting uh, appointments, um, you know, what, what, what little tricks have you picked up over the years for maybe mentors of yours that really helped you get going? So, I mean, a mentor of mine was Charlie commander and, and, and he was, he's, his family owns Century 21 Commander Realty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got to watch Charlie um, do in – with a very small team. I mean, I mean, he doesn't even have a team. He just has a few people that, that may help him do what some of these big teams are doing. And and the, the thing I saw – was he answered his phone. Like that was one of the biggest things is like he answers his phone and he calls people back when he says he's going to call them back. Mm -hmm. And that right there was huge. I didn't really understand that at the time how big it was, but – in our, it, it I sounds experienced that amazing. I experienced that though. So I, I worked as a real estate investor for years before I got my license. Right. And um, when I got my license, I was uh, working with now buyers, calling agents, mm -hmm. trying to set up showings or mm -hmm. ask questions. And you're right. N none of them would answer their phone. I have someone it, on the hook wanting yeah, to buy the property. It's crazy. And they won't return your call. It, it's or amazing call. that doing what you say you're going to do is, is the deciding factor to get business done. It's almost a shame. Yeah. To, you know, or, or um, a lot of different trades showing up on time or even yeah. close to the same time that, you know, people give sparkling reviews just for doing what you're supposed to be doing. For sure. For sure. It's almost like, it's almost like construction. That's how it is in construction. It's like, hey, uh, I need someone to, to, to do this. It's like, oh, well, they show up on time. It's not what kind of work do they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's right. like, will they be there yeah. when you say they are? It's kind of in real estate. And it's a, it's, a, my phone. it's a good reminder for people that are just starting out that it's not about what budget you have. Mm -hmm. It's not about wh who you know and what you know. It's about taking care of the fundamentals, doing the, the simple things of answering your phone, of, of calling, following up with people. And, it, and just those uh, simple things you can see already set you apart from For most sure. people in, mm -hmm. in so, your industry. So you used it an, an, uh, 
a word there that I, I use a lot, or I try to use a lot. I don't hear it in business much, but in sports, I hear it every day and it's fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And so I always try to relate that back to, to my agents. And, and if they're watching this, they'll probably throw up because they've heard this story a thousand <laughs> times. But so when I was with the Cubs, we, we had spring training. It's, I mean, it's 30 straight days of just all day baseball. The thing is what people don't realize is that's like when, I mean, we go back to the basics and you've got, you've got people that are making multi-million dollars, not, not this guy. That's why I'm yeah. in real estate. Cause I didn't make it, but, <laughs> but they, you got people that are making millions of dollars and they're going over stuff that is learning how to catch literally, literally like, all right. So I'll give you an example. I was an outfielder. All right. They would put us in the outfield and then they would hit the ball to the fence. We would have to run like 10 yards Pick the ball up, and it, but you wanted to make sure that you picked it up with four seams instead of two seams because that, that you actually – You don't want to drop it. We'll do what? You don't want to drop it. Yeah, exactly. Well, and also a two seam is going to move more, so a four seam you're going to throw it straight. So you just pick it up, boom, and you hit your cutoff in the chest. If you watch a Major League Baseball game, you're never going to see them miss their cutoff, man, which looks easy, but you go to a college game, you're going to see them miss their cutoff – once a game, mm -hmm. maybe twice a game. High school. High school, they're going to miss it three times a game, maybe 10 yeah. if, if it's bad. And then, and so the reason in the pros they don't is because they go back and they do those fundamentals for, mm -hmm. we do it for an hour. Yeah. It's so boring. So, so boring. So my, my point is, is when it comes to business and, and, and especially in real estate or anything where you're trying to do a commission, people, they don't role play. Mm -hmm. It's like, why, why would that, you, they don't practice. Yeah. They don't practice. Yeah. It's crazy to That's me. That's something uh, I should probably get back to. But I, I feel like I'm pretty good on the phone. But, um, you know, I, I used to sit with a manager. You yeah. used to go, ring, 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 ring. Yeah, And uh, sure. you, you would answer. And I'd, you know, go, go through the, the uh, you know, it was a script back then that I would make into, like, bullet points because mm -hmm. it felt more comfortable. For sure. But, um, so as far as uh, the the – the basics we were talking about um your mentor and just answering the phone and doing what you say uh you're gonna do mm -hmm. being a big one any other great ones that you took away yeah from? so i mean obviously you have to have a business plan right like it, I, I do remember when i got into real estate and it's like all right here's 30 different ways that you can create leads for yourself i was like all right well let's let's try all of them and see which you know and you can't like for me i say i, I hate telling people what they can and can't do if for me, it didn't work. So it's come up with what my plan was. Was it going to be, you know, for me, call expired? Was it, I'm going to go door knock or I'm going to do this. So I, I felt like once I learned how to, and he taught me to focus in on what my particular way that I was going to try to create the leads instead of trying to have my hand in a hundred different things, let's, let's try to get really good at one to two things and then mm -hmm. go from there. And my, mine was for sell by owners was, was one of the things that I, I got fairly good at. But another one was I just had influence in town because I, I, I wasn't afraid to get out there and I went to events and I had a little bit of name because of baseball and my dad owned a dry cleaner. So I knew some people um, that I just worked my sphere of influence really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. So I was at every event It's you know, you said we were everywhere. That, that was my goal was to be everywhere. And that's how I, I got it. So, you know, being everywhere, wearing my, my stuff all the time, talking mm -hmm. real estate whenever I could, um, you know, and then answer my phone when they did call. Yeah, it was. It's pretty simple, to be honest no, with you. That's um, uh, some really good basics. And uh, another thing that I've I've asked other guests before that have previous, uh, whether it's sports or military or other backgrounds, to see if they if that has influenced your success. Uh, you know, you talk about you know going over fundamentals. Um, did uh, your past in uh, sports? have any influence on you being successful in real estate? Oh, a, a thousand percent. It, uh, it took me a little bit to kind of learn how to, to harness and, and bring it from one area to the other. Um, and I think it worked a lot better. Like I told you, once I got out of being just an individual agent and then I became a broker and now I found my, my passion in, in, in leadership, mm -hmm. um, I was always the leader of the baseball team. Um, yeah. Not always the best one, but I, I was normally the one that people looked to. I was the, the you know, I was the leader. I think we just under, uh, uh, uncovered a nugget here yeah. Yeah. that if you want to be successful in real estate, just become a professional baseball player. First. Th that's, that's it. it. That's oh. it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah. Why is that so hard? It's a very simple process, to be honest with you. Um, no, but I, actually what I thought you were going was, and, and, and I do like it, was um, is, is my why. Like, like once I really got my why figured out, then it helped me 
to to kind of start setting those goals and really propel forward was was once I I did that. So. Yeah, we've talked about that on some of our episodes, and I love that conversation because it's so important um, that in every business, no matter what it is, what industry you're in, you face obstacles for sure. And if you have a level two why of uh, this is it would be cool if that happened when a level three or a level five or a level six obstacle, obstacle shows up, you're done. I like that. And I so like that. the the bigger your why. Op- the smaller the obstacles become, you know, yeah. they become speed bumps. Yeah, and you're able to o- overcome them because there's, yeah. a, there's no doubt in your mind because you're you're that. There's uh, a fortified r- in your really mind. awesome practice that that I've used over and over. It's called seven seven levels or seven yeses or something like that. And so you would ask somebody, hey, so Cody, why do you want to go into real estate? And he would he would say, oh, because of this. And then you say, why do you want that? Gotcha. Why do you want that? Right. Why do you want that? And you keep going until you get seven levels. And, and almost everybody that I've done this with, and even including myself, you're pretty much in tears by the time you get to the seventh level oh, of that wow. why, because cool. it's so to your heart and so important to you that, and then nothing can stop that. You know, there, like there's that. nothing more powerful on this planet than a made up mind. Nothing can yeah. stop that. I like that. Yeah. And it's just about making that in mind. You know, the word decision means to cut off, decide deci- mm-hmm. is to um, cut off from any other option and so once you make a decision you make up your mind and you head somewhere with a level 10 y you're unstoppable you you don't need a plan b i i I think one of the best compliments i've ever gotten um there was a young man who there again another cool story how we met but i was kind of mentoring him and he ended up moving to atlanta and he he had asked me he's like you know cody what's what's your why and I, I told him what my why was. And he goes, you know, I asked you that question three years ago, and you gave me the exact same <laughs> answer. He's like, I've asked that to a lot of people, and and they've never been able to, A, answer it, but B, give me the same answer. Yeah. yeah. So that, I was like, wow, that, that's pretty cool. So I, I, I felt like that's a big part of yeah. any success that I have had um, is, is because of that. I, I, I have a why. Um, and I think one of the challenges with most people is, is they don't know what they want. For sure. Like if you want to really stump somebody – like just make them to where they can't. And like, sometimes you can even get them defensive. It's just oh, ask them, sure. what do you want? And usually, what do you mean? What do I want? Like it's an aggressive yeah. response to, and I, I'm just asking, what do you want? And it's, we've been trained our whole lives never to look at that. Right. It's always to focus on what our parents want, what our teachers want, what our boss wants. Right. Um, and so when you put the focus onto what you want um, and then build that why of why you want that, and once you decide on that, then and a lot the of universe times, will provide. A, a lot of times, whatever you want doesn't fit in that box that's safe. You know, I think that that's another thing, too. Is, take, is, take risks. Absolutely. Well, Fortune favors the bold. If you look at it this way. Carpe diem. If, you're, if you are perfectly happy and blissful in your life right now, and you, then you've pretty much you've done it. You yeah, know? for sure. Right? So if there's any feeling of, I wish I could have this, I wish I could have this, I wish I could have the, those things that you want that you don't have right now. You know why you don't have them? Because they're outside of your comfort zone. Absolutely. 100%. Oh, man, you got to get outside of your comfort zone. If you always do what you always did, you're always going to get what you always got. One of the okay. best things I ever learned was getting used to be comfort- getting comfortable right. being uncomfortable. That's, and so and we, that's a marketing. <laughs> I, 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 tell, I tell our people all Must. the time, um, I, you know, like, you know, in sales, obviously there's cycles and everything. And, and whether it's a, a lot of our newer agents that maybe, you know, when you first get into sales, you either probably flop a little bit and you're, you're kind of floundering or you think you flopped, but you're kind of floundering or you've scratched the surface with a few of the people that maybe the family and friends. And then once you get past that, now you're like, okay, what do I do? And, and I'll go to them and I'll say, Hey, listen, how much money do you want to make this year? How, how many deals do you want to do? There is a direct correlation with how uncomfortable you get this year. And I'm having that conversation with people right now. There's one in particular, however much money you want to make this year, is completely dependent 100% on how uncomfortable you're willing to get. So in 2022, at the end, if you've only made 50,000 and you wanted to make 100, I promise you, you did not get uncomfortable, uncomfortable enough, period. And, and, and it's kind of simple to say that, and they kind of like, oh, yeah, I understand it, until it's game time, and it's time to get uncomfortable. And, and that's the thing, you know? So Yeah, so um, 
Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, yeah. It no, <laughs> it'll set you free, but it'll piss you off first. That's yeah. really good. And, and you know, I, I, as we're wrapping up, you know, we all know constant improvement is uh, important. If you want to be the best in what you do, you have to constantly sharpen the saw. You got to constantly mm-hmm. get better. Um, I, I know you. Uh, do uh, like workshops with mm-hmm. your groups. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I may have interrupted one, um, uh, uh, you know, giving you a call not too long ago. Uh, yeah, maybe. But um, <laughs> you have that kind of timing. Hey, I, you're good t- at that. Timing's everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's some of the best, uh, yeah, either like uh, mentors or um, uh, different sources of, of content that's helped you? Books? Yeah. So um, it's actually funny. Right before I came here, I was I have a I have a leadership coach mm-hmm. um, that that I I pay to to meet with every three weeks, and, the, and and that's incredibly worth it. Oh my goodness! I was actually talking to uh, my business partner earlier when I was in the ba- when I was not in the room. I wasn't in the bathroom talking on the phone. I promise. I, I, um, I, I, I can I, hear that echo. I, Don't I, yeah, lie. yeah. But but like it, it I, I want to get. A coach in everything now because mm-hmm. like it's so helpful but and it's worth the money and it's, it, worth, it's beyond just like an accountability my thing. goodness yes and so so anyways w- with him i was working and i was i was talking he was asking me about goals and and everything i was like it's funny you say that because i used to be the goal guy like i used mm-hmm. to be the guy that wrote down my goals and i would write my goals down before bed and mm-hmm. then when i woke up i like to sandwich my day like that because for me, let's just say I str- like for me personally, I struggle waking up. Like I'm not a morning person. If I write down my goals that night, it's gonna be really hard for me to sleep in the next day because if not, I'm gonna be sitting there calling myself a liar. The right. next day, I gotta get up and write it. So, anyways, we, we were talking about goals, so I'm gonna get back to writing those goals down. This is this is what worked for me that really took me to the next level. R- wrote my goals down twice a day. Mm-hmm. Okay, write them down in the morning. Write them down at night. It's the same goals. It's not a to-do list. It's goals. Yeah. And what you do is you set it up into uh, life goals, mm-hmm. yearly goals, weekly goals, and then that flows into your to-do list. Yeah. So let's just say, perfect commission. We want to, you know, I want to be worth ten million dollars one day. Well, okay. All right. Great. Starting right. really macro and going. Yeah. To micro. Well, well, because I, I know what that ten million could maybe you know, uh, afford me one day. And that's, that's the lifestyle I want to live for my family. There's other reasons, but mm-hmm. I can quantify it at 10 million for this year. I need to sell in real estate. Let's say I need to do 10 million in volume, which is going to equal to, you know, 300,000 in, in commission. All right. Great. That's quite the mission. That's quite the mission. Now, what do I need to do this week? Well, to, to reach that 300,000, I probably need to make X amount of phone calls. I need to make X amount of visits. I need to do this and that. Great. That's what I need to do this week. What do I need to do today? Mm-hmm. How many calls do I need to make today? What particular appointments do I need to go to That's today? Good. That's really so good. now, and what I love about that is when we're sitting there and we don't have that, like in a day, like, oh, I don't have that driver. I don't, I can look down and not only does it say I need to make five phone calls today, but I can link that five phone calls to the $10 million directly that I want to be worth one day. Mm-hmm. So everything that I do in that day is, has a purpose and is a part of the why. Yeah. So you're not just like, Hmm, what do I need to do? I need to call Sally. I need to yeah. call Steve. Like, that's not it. Like everything is, is in that. That's what I do. I do daily, weekly, monthly. Nice. And, and I mean, but that's just because it's, it's what I have to do either in the short term or, or, you know, a little bit longer than the immediate day. Um, but that's really good that w- while we're doing this show, we're learning uh, right alongside our viewers uh, that, but that's good. I'm going to start using that. Yeah. I, I offer an accountability coaching program with people. We, um, nice. I have an accountability coach and, and what we do is we take five steps, right? So you, you set a goal and we, we have a, a, a two hour session that they go through first where they do exactly that lifetime, three year, one year, three months Love it. is what we do. Love and it. then they pick goals for each and then they decide on one. And then we take that goal and break it into five steps. Nice. And then we take each of those five steps and we break those steps into down to three steps. Now they have 15 steps that you can do over the next two weeks. Can and you send so, that to me? Huh? Or is it proprietary? <laughs> no, 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 no. I could send it to you. I'd love to send it to I would love that. You. Yeah, and, it's and, amazing. And, and, and so what, what also is cool is today is he was teaching me and we went into the, uh, a tiered goal system to where, and I've never. Like, like prioritizing? I, no, actually like, so you have a goal, like for example, let's say I'm a, a Olympic speed skater. Okay. You're so an Olympic speed skater. Not, no, not anymore. I, that dream failed. <laughs> but you know, my goal would be gold, right? Well, that's three. All right. Um, 
four, like a, a one through five. Mm. So one, let's just say that's not meddling or that's a zero would be not meddling. One would be a, a competing, a bronze. Something. Two would be silver. Three is gold. But then maybe, maybe he was calling them stretch gold. So mm. not only did I win gold, maybe, maybe my fourth would be win gold, but set an Olympic record. Mm. Maybe five is actually set the world mm. record. So, I mean, the goal is to win gold and I'm ha- like, that is the goal, but I can stretch beyond that. Keep and, pushing yourself. And to me, that was so cool because I've always just been like, you either reach it or you don't, and that's it. And when you don't reach it, it's just kind of you're bummed out, you know. Um, but I, I like the tier goal system, and I'm gonna, I'm going to implement that. So, uh, guys, I, I I think we've had an amazing time hanging out with you. Thanks for coming, Cody. Yeah, and yes, we definitely have to have you back on. I, I, I'm yeah. Cody, I mean, just, just let me know. This is this so is much cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, season two is right around the corner. So Let's do it. Um, you know, this will have to be a, a repeat event. But um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for coming and uh, getting on the commission mission with us. I, I think that was definitely a mission accomplished. Definitely. Thanks a lot. Be sure to like and subscribe and tune in next week. Man, uh, there's a lot to unpack after that episode. I'm, I, just like Cody, I'm feeling fired up. You know, I'm ready to, to start the day and knock it out. Uh, a lot of those points were gold nuggets that anybody can can uh, utilize in their life you know, if you're if you're paying attention to our podcast you're starting to notice some some common threads from, yeah, from yeah, some of these exactly. superstar guests these yeah. super successful super people are all starting to say the same thing you know about having a big why mm-hmm. using a coach getting your fundamentals down i mean using a coach is something that i've kind of thought about for a long time a professional coach but i i i really didn't know I didn't know if I if I should, and now I really think that I, I should, um, at, at least just for the business, if not in uh, other areas, you know, uh, personal areas of my life. But getting a coach, let, oh, let's, yeah. let's I, do it's, it. It's crucial. I've, I've had one for years now, mentors of all co- types, but to have someone that can challenge you to – because there's, there's times, even with a big why and big obstacles – Sometimes life throws a lot of those obstacles our way mm-hmm. and beat us down, and um, we're exhausted. And there's got to be someone there to help pick us up and, and give us that extra motivation um, to get across the finish line. And, and coaches can, the right coach, and, can definitely do that for yeah, you. make the difference. And a part of that is always getting better at what you do because it, it is at least in, in my vision that you should always try to push yourself a little bit further and a little bit further. Uh, heck, w- watching this episode right now is a part of getting a little bit better at what you do. So, Well, when Roger Maris ran and broke the four-minute mile, you know, it was physically, scientists said it was physically impossible for a human being to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think in the next year, 36 other people did it. Exactly. So he we don't push know, himself. Yeah, and it's, well, it, there's... There's always that possibility for improvement. Like like Les Brown, one of my favorite lines ever is, is there's a, a, a misconception in, in society where people have this saying that say practice makes perfection. And it's not. It's practice makes improvement. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, there's always that opportunity for improvement. You can always have to push yourself. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming on the commission mission with us. Check in next time and you won't be disappointed. Be sure to join us next week. Thank you, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Commission Mission. It is our mission to increase your commission. If you got any gold nuggets out of the episode today, make sure you don't miss any more. Uh, Click, like, subscribe, whatever that action is for the platform that you're watching this on. Uh, Make sure you don't miss any more good nuggets and, you know, help us help you. Yeah, one of the things that new or struggling entrepreneurs struggle with is asking for the sale asking for what you need and they're, mm-hmm. they're afraid to do afraid of rejection but i'll give you a sample of that exactly right now is if this helped you in any way please share this with three friends of yours three people that you think would benefit from what was discussed on, on these podcasts and friends in sales anyone in, in your uh, organization uh that can benefit from this needs to hear it thanks everybody